I suppose with the story of life worth living, you've got to go back to our last record, Year Zero. I thought it was a really good record and I was, I was really happy with how it came out and I thought the songs were decent but I was just fed up with getting knocked back constantly and it almost seemed that it didn't matter how good the songs were or whatever we just weren't going to get any more recognition than we'd already had so even at that point I knew that whatever we'd done next had to be different first thing me and Simon done was we sort of exchanged things we'd been working on. Um, I sent him a couple of really rough sort of early versions of things like Enough is Enough. And he sent me some of the stuff he'd been working on and sort of said to me, you know, try and do something with it. When it first come through, I was like, what the fuck do I do with this, man? I didn't have a clue. I mean, my songwriting stretched to a, a notepad and a pen and, and a guitar in the past. I, I didn't know how to use any sort of um, cording equipment or anything like that. I had to learn very, very fast and sort of blag it and make out the sum and always knew what I was doing. But uh, I think once he sent me the brass loop for Life Worth Living and I think that was my first attempt at doing something and it, straight away it was exciting it was like it sounded like nothing we'd done before I think we got to about four or five and we decided, you know, it'd be good good to get in the studio and and knock them about. Um, but this time we were gonna we we're gonna go up north to a residential studio called Eve. So going into this record I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd never worked with the band and I'd only met Simon a few months before through the Doves. He popped into Eve, the studios that I'm working at, and uh, he liked the drum sound that we were getting in the room. And he thought that it'd be really, it, it would work really well for this um, album that he was working on, which turned out to be the Spitfire's album. I loved Eve, man. I thought it was great. I, I loved the fact that we were away from home, sort of away from everything, um, and we could just concentrate on recording. And the fact we were living upstairs, you know, you'd get up in the morning, have some breakfast, someone would come down about 10 half 10, I think, most days and then we just crack on. So Eve, where I work, is a residential studio, um, which basically meant when the band came to record, they were living there as well. It was just like a whole residential bit on the top floor. It, it, I think having it like that when you're recording the record really helps. Same with other albums I've worked on. Just kind of get really immersed in the sound of it, and it, it helps with the continuity of it, definitely.
well, they'd been playing together for a while and they were tight. Matt and Sam together, really, really tight rhythm section. So we just went on and tracked most of the album live to a click with Billy playing guitar and we had Stuart Little playing keys. There's periods where I didn't leave the studio for a week. <laughs> I just stayed in there. Everyone else, everyone else would do the beer runs and the fag runs and I'd just keep working. And I would have worked all night, to be honest, if Joe and Simon had let me. Just thrived on it, really. For 99% of the album, we just get everyone playing together in a room. Within three or four takes, we'd have it, and then we could either strip it down to just the drums or keep it all, depending on the energy of the track. Yeah, we, didn't, we just didn't want it to sound too sterile. We wanted to keep that energy of how they feel live, I guess. Joe and Simon were great to work with. I mean, they're both quite laid back compared to us lot, so um, it was a good balance in the studio, you know, when you've got Sam and Little going fucking mad because they've done their bits that morning and they're bored. One track that uh, stood out when recording, probably start all over again. I remember when, um, early before we were recording it, when we got the demos through and um, had like a psychedelic -y sort of vibe at the start. I remember when we were, when we were recording the group vocals for the chorus, and uh, it must have been about 11.30 at night and we've all sort of been drinking all day long. La 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 Took us about, you know, 15, 20 attempts to actually get it right. I remember the first time I heard Ted's place right down and the first thing I saw in my head was a 70s American cop show set in Miami, car flying through the hills. But um, when we got into the studio and started banging it down with uh, Simon and Joel, Simon and Bill was just sort of directing it all. Joel was at the controls making it sound good and it all just came together quite easy to be honest. Mental instrumentals, top quality vocals, yeah, the percussion sounds mega from Matt Johnson, yeah, the bass line, yeah, everything to it, uh, strings especially actually, really brings in that disco feel, and um, yeah, brass sounds alright. I remember learning this in a sound check, Alistair taught me the brass parts, and uh, we jammed it for probably 10 minutes or so, it was massive, it sounded huge even then final version of it on the album is just killer and uh, I still don't know what the words are I'm too busy listening to everything else that's going on How Could I Lie To You was inspired by a story told to us by a, a close friend in a hotel lobby in Germany while we were over there playing about someone who you know appeared they had everything in life they had the perfect family the perfect job perfect house but it was obviously something missing inside and one day he threw himself off of uh, a tower block
captured something special with this track. That sort of eerie atmosphere. Um, I think I've done a good job on the lyrics. I think the lyrics on the whole album are, are pretty good, to be honest. Especially as I was trying to do something different. Um, I think we managed to pull it off. I remember hearing the Kings and Queens demo for the first time. A bit like the others, yeah. It was hard for me to get my head around it because there's so much going on, these are initial ideas. The instruments don't sound the same because they're just thrown together on, you know, a garage band half the time and it's hard to see the bigger picture. How can this turn into a brilliant album track? But that's where Billy and Simon come in. They see the bigger picture. You're just along for the ride at the start of it. As soon as you get in that room and you start playing this song, developing the song, it suddenly clicks. You're like, yes. This is how it's meant to sound. I've known Billy and the lads for a while now. They first supported my last band in 2012. Yeah, watched them develop at quite an alarming rate, really. We always sort of wondered why they were overtaking us in, in terms of fan base growth and success. And it's only in the last 18 months or so since I've, I've really got to know them. I've been lucky enough to speak spend a lot of time with them uh, supporting them on various tour dates it's only in that time that I've realized why their success continues to kind of build and increase and they've got this amazing work ethic with quite a strong togetherness within the group that uh, they seem to just keep driving each other on and when I first heard the new record the first thing that I said to Billy was that you're going to surprise a lot of people with this because there's, first of all, some great songs on there, but there's an even broader range of styles than I've seen in any of their previous albums. And the production is a step up as well, but I think they've got so many options of where they can go, and I still think that their existing fan base are going to be into it. I just wish them all the best and I'm happy to have had that window into their creative process and to have uh, witnessed the, the songs coming together live and hearing them before everyone else, I suppose. So I've been working with the Spitfires with Billy and the lads for a few years now since the first album sleeve for response actually uh, despite our age difference I think um, you know we see life the same way we've got a very similar aesthetic I think I think as years go by you just find certain people that you work really well with and you click with. Um, we were pretty lucky early on that me, Matt and Sam were that way, but to go beyond that, to work with people like Tom Pullen and more recently Simon Dine, but I suppose the first person was Tony Briggs. I think we produced some really good work, some great artwork and the films over the years, um, but I think with Life Worth Living, We've took it to another level. With this album, I wanted to do something different for the artwork. I didn't want the band to be the central focus. Um, and this time I wanted the songs to speak for themselves. I wanted the images to reflect the characters in the songs or, or the environments or the situations I was thinking of. 
I think the fighters stand up for themselves in their own right, um, I suppose in an arty-farty sort of way. But I think Briggsy just captured everything and more that I was thinking or talking about. And they're all normal situations with normal people and we know everyone in them and, you know, it's, nothing was staged. It was just like, this is the idea. And Briggsy just took the photos and they just come out brilliantly. I also really like it that, that, that it's all shot in their manor over in Watford. And they're not shouting that they're from a particularly rough working class area. A regular British satellite town is nicer as shit as anywhere in the country. I think it's a really nice body of work and I'm very proud of it and I think it complements um, an excellent album. To make it through each day I could sit for hours and blabber on about how good the band are and how good the songs are and how good this album is. I'm extremely proud of what we've achieved and I think this record is going to stand up and be listened to for a very long time. Leave me on, cause I'm